Welcome to, to, to today's uh, devotional on 1 Samuel. And today we're on a very pivotal, important chapter in Israel's history. Now, this chapter, chapter 7, begins with the mention that the Ark of the Covenant was housed in the home of Abinadab. Now, it could not be returned to its former location at Shiloh because Shiloh had been destroyed by the Philistines following that battle in which Israel was so completely defeated. Archaeology has shown that Shiloh was, in fact, completely destroyed at that time. The tabernacle had apparently been removed from Shiloh before Shiloh's destruction and was being kept hidden by, from the Philistines. Remember also that the high priest Eli had died upon hearing the news of Israel's defeat and the loss of the ark. So God's repudiation of Israel was massive. Israel was defeated, the ark was lost, and they were without a high priest or a tabernacle. Israel has, had been put to open shame by God. Let's read verse 2. It came about from the day that the ark remained at kiriath Jerium, that the time was long, for it was 20 years, and get this, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Israel lamented after the Lord. They sorrowed that they had lost God's favor and protection. And they grieved over their own foolishness and hard-heartedness that had caused it all to happen. If you've ever grieved over some defeat or tragedy that came upon you because of your own foolishness or hard-heartedness, then you know what they felt. They left the ark there at kirith Jerium because they were despondent and they simply did not know what to do. Never did things seem so hopeless for Israel. And this period lasted for 20 years. But God is a faithful God, and he is a God of restoration. And how many of you know he'd already prepared a man for the hour? Let's read verse 3 through 4. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart to remove the foreign gods and the ashtroth from among you, and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him alone, he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the sons of Israel removed the Baals and the Ashtaroth, and they served the Lord alone. Now, we know that God had already authenticated Samuel as a prophet in chapter 3. It said that God didn't let any of his uh, prophecies fall or fail, and that uh, all Israel knew he was a prophet. So the people listened to him and believed in Samuel's words, and they repented. And they put away whatever idols they had. So Samuel called them to a sacred assembly. Pick up in verse 5. Then Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mitzvah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. And they gathered to Mitzvah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the sons of Israel at Mitzvah. Now, fasting, of course, is associated with repentance, and this pouring out of the water is associated with pouring out one's soul before the Lord. Both of these actions gave physical expression to their words, we have sinned against the Lord. God's actions against Israel and their 20 years of suffering had brought about national repentance. However, this gathering of Israel at this sacred assembly provoked a response from Israel's enemy, the Philistines. You know, Satan always tries to oppose us from getting right with God. Now, Israel's faith was still weak. Their faith was in Samuel as much as it was in God, as we read in verse 7 and 8. Now, when the Philistines heard that the sons of Israel had gathered to Mitzpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel and when the sons of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Then the sons of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord for our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. It is an untested and immature faith that depends upon the faith and righteousness of spiritual leaders, rather than being anchored by the mercy of and faithfulness of God alone. They cried out to Samuel, basically, pray to God and save us. Now, we still see this problem today when many lose faith or become lost 
if a pastor or some spiritual leader fails. Now, while we must be thankful for the blessing that comes to us from our spiritual leaders, we must have our faith in the faithfulness of God alone, rather than any fallible or imperfect leader. We will see the same failing of Israel in the next chapter when the Israels want to put their faith in a human king rather than trusting in God alone. Now, let's look at the result of this revival that came about under Samuel's preaching, verses 9 through 11. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, and the Philistines drew near to battle Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day against the Philistines and confused them, so that they were routed before Israel. The men of Israel went out of Mitzpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as Beth Car. Now, it had looked really bad, and while Samuel and God's people were having a worship service, the Philistines came and drew up for battle. Israel worshiped and prayed while the Philistines sharpened their swords. But all of a sudden, God came down from heaven and acted mightily on their behalf. He sent such an awesome display of lightning and thunder that the Philistines fled in terror and full disarray. The Israelites then left their prayer meeting and pursued the Philistines a great distance and inflicted such casualties upon them that the Philistines were subdued for years. In fact, we read that the Israelites retook all the land that the Philistines had captured in years past. In fact, the deliverance by God had been so dramatic that the Amorites, who also dwelt in Canaan, made peace with Israel. Now, this chapter is a testimony to the great impact of Samuel upon Israel. Samuel foreshadowed the greater deliverer Jesus who would come in the future. We know Jesus is our prophet, our priest, and our king. And this chapter shows that Samuel also served in three offices. In verse 3, he functioned as a prophet, warning them against idolatry and promising them the return of God's blessing if they would repent. In verse 8 and 10, he functions as a priest, offering sacrifices on their behalf and interceding for the nation. And in verse 15 through 17, it describes his judging Israel and the circuit he would travel throughout Israel to function as a judge. Well, God bless you, and uh, we'll pick this uh, story up tomorrow.